Hey there, my name is Nef Ahmedev, and today I want to talk about a little thing that I apparently didn't really understand about Svalcade, and someone in my comment section drew attention to me, and yeah, today I'm going to talk about this. As you probably saw in the thumbnail, it's about form actions versus server endpoints, in Svalcade especially. But let's first actually go over what these kind of exactly are. So we have our little code base open here, which is our to-do Svalcade application, um, yeah, which I probably uh, covered uh, too, in too many videos, but it's just a prime example of some concepts that I want to explain to you. If you don't already know in Svelkit, we have some kind of different kinds of files, of TypeScript files. We have these page.server.ts, which go alongside this page.svelte. So they're kind of like siblings, some kind of. But we also in our API folder, for example, but you really can name this folder however you want. It's just for semantics. We name this API. Um, we have these plus server.ts uh, endpoints. And the way these work is kind of, they are exposed like this would be localhost 5173 slash API slash delete. But this one, this page.server.ts, will just be the loading function which initializes some stuff. Again, I won't go over the basic concepts of Svalkit. Um, I assume that you already know these, and I just want to cover today's topic. Why are these endpoints not really a good choice if you want to do some actions on the server? Like, for example, in here, uh, inserting into the database, which, um, yeah needs some environment variables not in our case because we are using a local file but um if you're going to production you of course uh, probably have some environment variables uh, which shouldn't be exposed to the client right so why are these endpoints really not so cool because first of all they need javascript and i already talked about this in my last video where i talked about astro and Svalkit. i am probably in like the same opinion as Rich Harris about JavaScript. I don't think that the goal is to um, do zero JavaScript. I think the goal is more to um, optimize JavaScript, right? So they don't need JavaScript, right? But is this really a problem? Because who in the modern world does not have a browser which doesn't support JavaScript? Like probably not so many, right? But I think it's still important because uh, if we have these JavaScript things, they all need to be initialized and stuff. So this is not really practical. But you can have multiple forms per page, which is super practical. You have basically you can have unlimited form actions per page. And with the use enhance helper function, um, this basically upgrades the form again and with stuff like uh, Svelkit Superforms, which I already covered in a few videos, they get even crazier with client-side validation and all of that stuff. So it's really cool, in my opinion. So I really love uh, Svelte form actions or Svelkit form actions for being like this clean to work with and this easy to work with. But let me actually show this to you in a real world application. So this is Zenith right here. Um, my full stack project, which is a kind of an AI planner application. And let's actually collapse everything first and look at the SRC and the routes. And you can see that we have this page.server.ts. And let me tell you, I have many actions in this. So this is where the actions begin. And this is where they end. So about 120 lines of just uh, form actions. Uh, we have, of course, many actions. We have create. We have edit, we have toggle, and we have purchase. And I will go over what all of these are just in a second um, to like explain to you a bit better so you can understand. Um, but what we have here is also an API folder. But in here, we just have two things. We have GitHub and Stripe webhook. So um, what are these? These are basically endpoints which can be accessed inside the application itself. So, for example, Stripe, when we make a purchase, the Stripe API sends some data back to us, to our little endpoint right here. And we process this endpoint and insert DB stuff. And in our GitHub callback, this is basically if we log in with GitHub and then we get redirected to this callback thing which um, takes in this request event. And this is the only point where I would really use these um, endpoints of Svelkit. 
because I think they're in other cases, they're not really necessary, right? Yeah, so let's quickly take a look again at this one. We have this little action called edit, uh, but if we actually go into our application, I can show it to you on the dev server because something is like wrong. Um, but if I go into uh, the app, which is not completely up to date, but it works for our purposes. Um, yeah, say hi to dad, just a little boilerplate. We can actually edit this from here and we can actually also edit this from here. Um, and this is from Superforms. Um, but this is actually two different routes. So if you go ahead and look, this is app slash upcoming. And this is just the root route, I guess. And if we change this to mom, and on here, we're going to change that to t-shirts. I don't know. Um, it's going to still work, right? And if we actually go into the network, I don't know if we can see this here. Um, well, if we are here and change this back to dad, we are going to edit, which is basically the form action in our route, right? But if we go here and go ahead and buy some sweatpants and rename this, update this basically, we also go to the same thing and not to slash upcoming slash edit. So this is probably a thing that I didn't know about Svalcat form actions that you really can do. And this is in our components. We can have like a form action pointed to another route. So the way I thought you could do it was just like that. Just here. Um, it does not care what is here. And just the current route, I guess. And then to the form action called, uh, called edit. Well, we could also do this, which would point it to the root folder or account slash and then it will go to account and then the edit um, form action on account uh, you th really I think you're seeing what I'm getting at so this can be like you can point a form action to another route which is super powerful right I also think that form data is a bit easier to like transfer data than with JSON and the way I used to do this is not even with JSON but with URL params so um, this is even less type safe. Uh, the, the, the default form action is also not really type safe, of course, but with super forms it is because of Zod. But yeah, I just think form action is superior to just like doing some JSON shenanigans. Um, just my opinion, maybe you find JSON just working right. But in my opinion, it's just too on type safe, I guess. And you can name your actions like however you want. Um, and of course you can have unlimited like I have here with the one big plus page on server.ts with 120 lines of actions. You can get pretty complex, right? And you don't actually need a full page reload uh, to do if you have use enhance. You can then just like revalidate basic or invalidate the data and get some new data. So let's actually jump back into our little file right here and do some cool stuff. We want to remove these API things because they are not receiving some kind of data from outside of our application. So there's really no need for this. And the way we're going to do this is firstly, we're going to rename this uh, thing, this schema to uh, the create schema like that. And we're going to rename this form into let's say create form we need to spin up our dev server uh for getting the types actually generated data dot create form like that yeah now we have that but we also need to initialize a few other forms so first of all we need to const toggle uh form not toggle schema uh, which is a z dot object We can initialize this form as well. So toggle form schema right here and return the toggle form as well. And delete form. Okay, so to do everything a bit more precisely, we're going to take all of these out. Uh, we can remove this on use import and create a zod.ts file in here 
paste this right here and import Zod. And down here, we can just auto import all of them. And we need some more props in order to do that spout. So export let um, toggle uh, form is super validated. And then we have type of uh, it is the no super validated and then infer and then we have type of the toggle schema from here and now we should have a form right here like that really cool and we actually don't need these anymore and we also don't need these yeah so const is equals to super form and we have a toggle form and we can pass in some config i'm just going to do invalidate all is true and form and then we can actually name this which is the toggle form let's call this toggle form data enhance is toggle form enhance like that and we can already wrap this into a form action is slash toggle and method is post move it one up and we should have an input type text hidden bind value is a dollar sign form or no toggle form form dot id and this is going to be let's copy that and toggle form dot state and we can actually like preset these so yep so we now actually also need to send this um form data down and we're gonna do this uh with toggle form data is data dot toggle form just really straightforward and we have this cool um now let's define a little action right here which is called toggle and this is async request we can already take this and just console log it to debug that and you will see that if we go ahead and click here yeah, we need to move this to create in our page. We need to go ahead and do action like that. And now if we press that, we see that it's hit. This is a success. Let's go. Um, we can do const form is await super validate. Uh, and then we give it a request and then if form dot valid respectively if form is not valid zod toggle schema like that if form dot valid return fail 400 and form like that because you always if you return anything you always need to return the form it's like a little rule in super forms you await dp dot update uh then to do's table dot set and then we have completed is the opposite of form dot data dot state which is a boolean right yep dot where should be equal to to do table dot id and and form dot data dot id like that it's actually not really a good practice to do this one um, like with these hidden form inputs because they can be manipulated i think i'm not really sure but i think it's a bit of a security vulnerability so we do unsubmit and in unsubmit we can go ahead and do and then we can do form data dot set and in here we can do id is to do dot id but we need to do this to a string because form data is string and form data dot set 
uh, state is to do the completed uh, to string. Okay, we can do this. So we just do this string like that. And now it works. Cool. Don't forget to um, return the form again here. And you can basically apply this to the next one as well. Um, I won't show it to you because I want that you learn something as well. But I think you really get the gist of it. This like this feels much more native than before where um, you could see that there was a little bit of a page reload and stuff going on in the background. But this is just pretty fast. And what you even can do is go ahead and do this and then even um, do form action and point this to another form, which is really cool. Or you could even do crazier shit with that. You can go ahead and set the ID um, to my form and go ahead and do a button completely outside of the form and go ahead and say complete and uh, form uh, is my form and form action would be slash uh, toggle and even now this works so this is crazy you can even do forms like outside or buttons outside the form um really cool right so thanks again to this uh little um drawing to attention by this little comment um thanks a lot and yeah i hope you could learn something never forget to return your form or your redirect at the end of your action because sometimes your form will kind of break of course and yeah and yeah again thanks for the huge support um this channel has been getting uh please don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out any future videos this repository is also on github i will quickly do the delete form as well for you to go ahead and check on github and yeah we'll see us next time see ya